All righty. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, the two debaters tonight will be Hamid from Finding Truth, Matt Dillahunty, who does, uh, you have your own channel and you also have it's the call in line. Yeah, on, on the line on the hangup. On the lines. See, I knew I'd, I'd butcher something in the opening few minutes, but we're going to kick it off and go straight in. This is the discussion. Um, does God exist? Amid, you get to go first. I'll put 10 minutes on the clock. Just toss me your slides and I'll put them up for you. Yeah, so I need to share my screen now? Yep. Okay, doing that. I'm just looking for the screen for the slides. There we go. Yeah, so... Yeah. Okay, is it showing? <clears throat> yep, success. Okay, so um, we can start the time now. So uh, let's say um, a little about me. So uh, my name is Ahmed, and um, I, I run Finding Truth, uh, which has like 30K subs. I am a born Muslim, and I chose to uh, remain uh, a Muslim and live my life by Islam. I'm a an electronics and communication engineer um, uh, with a career in uh, computer science and, and um, implementing complex systems. I have a master's in business administration focusing on international business. I did um, academic studies of Islam for four years. I have 30 years experience in information systems, implementations and design and have 20 years of uh, executive positions. I speak four languages at different levels of proficiency and travel the world. And I have a passion for uh, finding truth, and uh, hence the name of my channel. So um, uh, I'm going to give you, walk you through a few minutes of um, why I think um, the existence of God is evident. And in my opinion, there are, there are many ways um, through which one can infer that God does exist, and actually, not only that he exists, but he actually cares. And uh, we, we, can, we can take this from the angle of philosophy, from the angle of uh, uh, physics, from the angle of cosmology. But I am going to select one special angle that I actually like a lot because it is, um, let's say, ubiquitously uh, evident to the commoner and to the scientist and to the philosopher. So... It is actually through the observation of our daily life, through the observation of living things. How is that? Um, in the Quran, my, 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 my thesis is about, uh, in this discussion, is about whether God exists or not. But since I'm a Muslim, uh, 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 God's name is Allah. And I, I would like to refer to this ayah in the beginning. Um, in a discussion between Moses and Pharaoh in the Quran, Moses, uh, uh, Pharaoh asked Moses, who is your God? So he says, He said, our Lord is who has given everything its creation and then guided. So Moses chose to identify God by this feature. He guides uh, those that he creates. And hence... This is something that we should be able to observe. Let's compare to our human experience. When us as humans, when myself as an engineer, I engineer a system, um, I am trying to solve a solution. Engineers solve solutions, a certain need. People need something, and hence engineers find a solution, and they build something to solve this. Um, and they use the resources around them. So... Designing something is always a matter of something being needed. So engineer will design his thing to fit the need, but for this thing to be used properly and to be able to survive its, its, um, its lifetime, an engineer will issue an instruction manual to explain how this thing should be used so that the user can be guided in how uh, this thing is used. So when you build something, especially something sophisticated, when you have a, a machine, um, an instrument, you will give an instruction manual that shows how it is used. And we would expect uh, to see this, 
uh, uh, God who cares will not just uh, create living things. He will He will give them cues about the way to live. So He will engineer them for a purpose. He will uh, put their bills of material, the way of building them. Uh, these things we can see in our genetics, etc. But He also sends them um, uh, uh, guidance. For in the case of human beings, He sends this guidance in the form of messages through prophets. But in other living things, we find this. Um, uh, common feature that they know how to lead their lives. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on one very interesting creature as an example, but I'm sure everybody who's watching this can relate what I am saying to tens or hundreds or even thousands of creatures. So this creature that I like is, is the beaver. And the reason I'm referring to the beaver uh, as an example, is that because I want to point to this very strange feature of living things, which is their knowledge. A kind of knowledge that can only be acquired through education, otherwise receiving information from an external source. A beaver, for example, uh, knows or has this amazing skill of knowing how to build dams. So a beaver can be in a forest. This forest is not wet, and he would find a place in the river. He will select a place, and then he will build a dam um, in a magnificent uh, manifestation of civil engineering. He will build a base for the dam using stones, and then he will put, put wooden sticks uh, of thick diameters. He prepares these sticks by actually cutting down trees uh, using his incisors, and he will put them in a specific arrangement. He will then collect branches and weave those branches in a specific way. He will then, then use mud to, to close up gaps, and he will keep on doing this until he completely uh, uh, has a dam that will slow down the, the motion of the water and will raise the water level. And then in the place where the water level is raised, he will build his lodge, which is another marvel of engineering. This small creature has the ability of terraforming huge plots of space that can be even seen uh, from satellite. Uh, he, he will completely terraform, uh, uh, talking about humans looking to terraform planets. This creature actually terraforms huge. Uh, one beaver can actually uh, uh, refeature uh, a huge land plot, um, converting woods into ponds, let's say. Um, this is, for example, the way he will build. And I would, I would actually advise everybody who's watching this to go and Google or look on YouTube for uh, documentaries about beavers and see the marvel of this thing. Uh, beavers can build dams that are like 500 meters long, can go up to 10 feet. Uh, very sophisticated process, as I tell you. Uh, cutting down trees, uh, and he knows what he's doing. Kassan is very great proficiency. And then he reaches to the branches that cuts the branches, branches and uses them to build the dam this way. And then he builds the lodge. And the lodge is not just like a heap of things. It has a tunnel. This tunnel is accessible from underwater. And then there is a chamber. The chamber has an ingenious uh, system of ventilation. Uh, and now he can keep there uh, safe from predators, but he can also survive for the whole winter uh, inside his living place. And he also creates this amazing artifact called the refrigerator where he would take branches with green leaves and submerges them underwater and make sure they remain underwater so even if the water surface gets frozen or he does not have access in winter to the forest he will get out of his lodge without being exposed outside of the river go to the refrigerator where the leaves due to the uh, 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 low temperature of the water remain fresh bring some leaves and branches into his lodge and eat it there and he can actually live the whole winter there. Point is, this creature has this uh, knowledge, this information about what a forest is, what a river is, what a dam is. He has building instructions to build the dam, building instructions to build the lodge. This needs uh, very sophisticated information about civil engineering, about ventilation systems, about water currents, about so many things, but he just does it. And this is a little animal. He knows nothing. You can actually trick him by small tricks. He, he's just an animal. Uh, no PhDs, no engineering bachelors, but he knows this. And this is not only the, the only creature that comes into this almost 
every creature has this thing that we call instinct, and some of those instincts, instincts go very sophisticated like this. We all know about birds that migrate thousands of miles. We know about ants, very small insects that collectively can build colonies that are very sophisticated pieces of engineering, whether termites that build towers or other ants that build, build underground tunnels with ventilation, with farms, uh, um, very sophisticated structures that we use through biomimicry to uh, understand things and build things uh, uh, much better when we learn from these creatures. We know about turtles, we know about salmons that travel from the uh, salt water into the uh, uh, sweet water of rivers. They travel against the current until they reach a specific place and leave their eggs. 30 to seconds hatch. left. Yeah, and they go back. What's the point? There is very clear knowledge. Knowledge comes from a mind. There has to be an overarching mind who has created this universe, who has created these creatures. He is in continuous transmission to those creatures. He is also transmitting to us. But since we have free will, he gives us this knowledge into a message that we can accept or reject. And this is the reason we are here. Uh, and thinking that there is a message without a sender would not be a rational position. So my position is God exists and it is evident. All right. Matt, I'll start your 10 minutes when you are ready to begin. Yeah, I'm ready. Awesome. All righty. So, hi, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Um, I realize that probably nobody's going to be watching this in the United States because tonight's the State of the Union, which I didn't realize when, when we set this up. Uh, I would actually, you know, be doing a live stream right now talking about it. But um, I've done a bunch of debates, and I try to make sure that when I come in to give opening remarks on these that I don't just say the same thing every time. And most of the time I stick with properly applying the burden of proof. If you're going to claim that a God exists or whatever Loch Ness monster exists, you've adopted a burden of proof that you then must meet. And my position isn't so much uh, that I'm mean, needs to show up and say, God exists. And I need to show up and say, no, no, he doesn't. It's more of a long lines of, you know, He's arguing that it's evident that God exists, and I'm arguing, no, it's not evident that God exists. Um, and so the burden of proof being on those that are asserting the positive position. However, does the Loch Ness Monster exist, since we brought it up? I think if you asked most people, colloquially, they would just say, no. They're not asserting that we've disproven the Loch Ness Monster. They're not asserting that it's absolutely impossible. They're not asserting that we've confirmed it. Generally speaking, the Loch Ness Monster was proposed. There were stories about it. There were proposed pictures of it. There were people who told their stories of interactions with the Loch Ness Monster. And at the end of all of it, we, after much searching, not only have we failed to find the Loch Ness Monster, we failed to find good evidence that's consistent with its existence. And we found and discovered things that are consistent with it, perhaps not existing. And so generally speaking, when somebody says, well, does the Loch Ness Monster exist? The correct answer for now, tentatively, is no. Same thing with Bigfoot and other um, cryptozoological creatures. Because there's nothing there to verify. When it comes to God, all gods, matter of fact, all supernatural propositions, we're in a similar position. Uh, it's not that we can prove that the supernatural doesn't exist. It is ultimately unfalsifiable. There's not necessarily any way, practical or otherwise, to show, hey, the supernatural doesn't exist. But what we can say is that when people propose the supernatural as an explanation for something, um, it first of all, we're not necessarily uh, confident that we have any good reason to suppose that that should be a candidate explanation, uh, let alone... Do we, we don't, have, or in addition to that, we do not have evidence that the supernatural um, can interact with the natural in a detectable fashion. Uh, and so when people claim that they've detected the supernatural or that they are inferring the supernatural, they're essentially claiming to have um, identified the unidentifiable uh, or discovered the undiscoverable. And in a lot of these debates, because I'm talking about skepticism, because I'm talking about critical thinking, it becomes a standpoint of here's my position. I am not convinced. And some people get really strung up or hung up on, on that. And they're like, well, it's not about just convincing you. And you're correct. This isn't about whether or not Ahmed or anybody else can convince me. It's about credible standards of evidence. 
there are plenty of truths in this world um, that have met their burden of proof, positions that stand up to scientific rigor or even a courtroom's burden of proof. The claim a bat exists is accepted by virtually everyone on the planet, even if they haven't personally seen a bat, uh, including scientific organizations, universities, museums, etc. The claim that the Loch Ness Monster exists is not accepted because it hasn't met that standard of evidence, and neither is the claim that a god exists. For the sake of diplomacy and knowing how violently some people can be uh, when they respond to attacks on their uh, deeply held convictions, um, even governments that have official state religions don't generally assert as a matter of fact in their courtrooms or elsewhere that a god exists. Instead, they want to label it religion or personal faith, and they have kind of a hands-off status uh, saying, you know, hey, this is potentially unfalsifiable. False, potentially unfalsifiable. This is a matter of uh, personal faith or personal conviction. And so we're not going to go saying that's not true. But if you listed the things that are verified true, that are known to be true, that are accepted as true, God doesn't fit in there any more than the Loch Ness Monster does, and perhaps even less. In courtrooms in the modern world, we no longer accept spectral evidence. You can't come in and testify um, and expect to be taken seriously that ghosts, gods, angels, demons, devils, pixies, jinn, fairies, or any other sort of supernatural agent uh, is responsible for anything. Uh, they didn't guide you to a truth. None of, the, none of that is accepted as evidence in courtrooms. And it's not just that we have good reason to not believe that a God exists or believe that, be unconvinced that a God exists. We have good reason to believe that God doesn't exist. The soft atheist position or the weak atheist position is, I am not convinced that a God exists. And that's the bare minimum. That's normally what, what I would end up defending. The strong or hard atheist position is that God does not exist, that I am convinced, I'm not absolutely certain, I'm not claiming truth, but God, I, mean, I am convinced that the God that you're proposing doesn't exist. Now, in order to do that, I can't just walk into a debate and say, oh, yep, God doesn't exist. We would have to first define God. And in this case, in this discussion, we have some understanding of what Ahmed is defining as God. Um, and so we can then look at that and ask, okay, what evidence and facts do we have that would support the proposition that this God exists? And what evidence and facts do we have in opposition to this? Um, we have good reason to believe that no such being exists. And if there's, if, if, if it's not clear to people, it is why on earth would a being like a God or a God being that Ahmed believes in or um, anybody else believes in not demonstrate their existence clearly? Why would they allow the debates to continue? Why would there be hundreds or thousands of years of discussion and fighting and arguing over what it is that a God wants, what it is that a God needs, what, is God, what a God expects of us, um, with no clarification? Um, the Muslim is as, is as confident in their belief in a God as a Christian is, and in many cases as Hindus and others are as well. Why leave so many people flailing about incredibly confident in their conviction um, that not only is there a, there is a God, but that, that this individual has found the correct one and is communicating with that God. The personal experiences that people portray um, for each of these beings, uh, you can find that in competing and conflicting religions. Why are, are these believers left to infer that a God believes? Why are they left to look around the world and try to find something that they can then prop up and say, ah, here's the thing that seems to suggest or strongly leads me to conclude or allows me to infer that there is some sort of mind behind this. Ah, they'll, they'll say, but Matt, God can't be put into a beaker. You can't put God in a test tube. You can't test a God that way. Why not? Is God incapable of submitting himself for reliable verification? That seems like a very weak God that is in, incapable of doing that. If, is God unwilling to submit himself to that sort of verification? That also seems to be a very weak God, at least in character, that, that this sort of God would expect uh, reverence or understanding or acceptance of his existence while failing to provide reliable data. If all we're left with is inference and intuition and um, um, 
the sort of attempts to make sense of the world rather than, you know, the, the, the proposition is that there's a being that has all of this information. And many people claim to communicate with this being or to have received information from him. I mean, Ahmed himself referenced that uh, this God provides guidance through the prophets. Well, why use a mediator? Mediary? Why not just provide the information directly to anyone and everyone who asks or all at once? Where is the data? Where is something beyond appeals to ancient people's supposed interactions? Where's the confirmation of an interaction today? And if God can interact back then in the past more directly, why not now? What happened apart from the invention of better ways to investigate and better ways to record information? Why do miracles drop off or reports of miracles drop off uh, in, in direct opposition to the increase in our ability to test them, explore them, to record them in, in with video and other uh, information? It is all interpretation, personal experience, changed lives, all of it ignoring psychology and science and failing to meet any burden of proof at all. It is, let's look at the world around us, try to figure out how it works, which is a wonderful process. And then instead of going with reliable methods that we would include as science, some have said, instead, I infer that the best explanation for all of this is some sort of magical being that is currently hiding from us, but is giving us just enough information for me to be warranted, but maybe not you. And on that front, I don't believe that a God exists. And I may in fact believe that the God does not exist. All righty. Hamid, uh, when you are ready, I'll put five minutes up. Do you have any slides for your rebuttal or just go straight from there? Oh, you're, you're muted, I believe. Yeah, so I will, um, I will, go, I will go ahead. Before, so, before we do that, is it possible to pause for just two minutes so that I can run yeah. out of the room? My apologies Here, to everyone. I will be right back. No, no, it'll give me a good time to uh, do some plugs for a David Wood conversation coming up. Uh, for those watching, uh, thank you for uh, liking, subscribing. Please consider sharing the video. Um, conversation again with David Wood will be happening the beginning of next month. There's already one video I did a few days ago. Um, I will be hosting a few more debates. Also, any super chats that come in, I'll pop those up on the screen while they're debating. When we do get to the Q&A portion in, in about 30, 40 minutes, uh, they'll only be about 15 minutes. So any super chats will take priority. But when I tell you to start putting in the questions, put at James is tired, and then they'll pop up. If you put them in now, it'll be too far back for me to go, and then I won't be able to find them. I made you doing all right without coffee? For those who don't know, um, Amid jumped in very last minute uh, three days ago to fill in for Jake, who is under the weather. Uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. And uh, you know, all know we live in different time zones. Where my friend is, it is three in the morning right now. Yeah. <laughs> You are good to go whenever you're ready, Matt. Just let me know and I'll start the timer. Or I'm not, ready. Matt, sorry. I made my apologies. Sorry. Yeah. I made. Apologize for the delay. I'm back. Yeah. It's you're five good. minutes, right? Yes, five minutes. Okay. So actually, um, uh, since this is the opening statement of Matt, I wouldn't... Um, uh, hold him to having said a rebuttal to what I said because uh, I think it isn't. Uh, I, I would expect that in his rebuttal. But let me let me respond to his notes because what I did in my opening statement is exactly what he asked for, actually. So I'm starting from uh, the scientific method. The scientific method, you will put a theory which is a best explanation for some measurements or facts. Um, our, our science has never been uh, about uh, being completely sure of anything. We see, we see, we see uh, phenomena. We we measure things, and we give best explanations that we call them theories, where the evidence would uh, consolidate. 
until we find that, uh, that there are new evidence that does not make it valid anymore. So we create a different theory or a bigger theory that will include the new evidence. So my starting premise is we know that knowledge uh, is the product of a mind. I know something, I tell it to somebody before I told him he didn't know it. After I tell him, he knows what I have told him. Now, when we find knowledge, okay, if you if you Google something on the internet, if you ask about beavers on the internet, and you find a piece written about beavers, you know that somebody has written it. It didn't write itself. Um, so my point is, we see knowledge every single day whether you have a cat at home, a dog at home, whether you're looking at a bird that is building a nest with extreme ingenuity and sophistication, whether you're looking at this little rodent called a beaver that builds dams and lodges and refrigerators, whether you look at ants that build sophisticated ventilation systems, you see that these creatures that do not have intellect, uh, that did not go to university, that did not study engineering, that did not study the laws of physics or they are not chemists and they create these sophisticated engineering structures and they do it. They do it right out of birth. Uh, beavers, for example, um, uh, a scientist uh, called Lars Wilson, if I recall well, has separated beavers from their parents. They have never seen their parents and they actually build dams. Uh, you put them around water, they build dams. You even can trick them that there is water by giving them the sound of water and they will start building dams. Uh, they have this innate knowledge about how to build dams. Ants do the same thing. Birds that migrate do the same thing, etc. Now, if this is not enough, that every living creature around us, uh, to an agnostic, let's say that, that Matt has described himself as, a soft as, as taking a soft atheist position, that, okay, I don't know. Show me something that tells me that there is something beyond this universe. Now, as a communication engineer, specifically my speciality, my study, if you have information math, there has to be a sender. There needs to be a channel so that the receiver will receive anything. If every living thing is receiving information that is beyond his physical composition and you do not consider this evidence for a transmitter, we do have a problem with our scientific inference. This is the way we do science. Now, then your question, so why doesn't God communicate with us? Well, he does. He does send us messages. But we are people. If he sends the message right into your brain, if he treats me and you like he treats beavers and ants, what's our choice? If he feeds us into us the knowledge that we need for our life, it is not what he intends for us. Uh, different from all other species in, in, in the living kingdom, uh, humans come with very minimal knowledge, maybe things like how to suckle, for example. But even the, the, the very basic things that we need to know to lead our lives, we need to learn, we need to acquire this knowledge. Um, and we also need to acquire knowledge about God. And then you need to take a choice. We are here to take this choice, essentially. He tells us through his prophets, you are here, I'm going to give you the evidence, but I'm also going to give you temptation. I'm going to give you the power to be merciful or to be cruel. And if you choose to be merf merciful, then you are more like me. If you choose to be cruel and you have fire in your heart, you are more like fire. You will join fire. That's it. It's, it's, it's a very simple choice. We are privileged by having the uh, intellectual faculty. We are privileged by having the um, power of choice. He communicates to us like he communicates to other, but he gives others, but he gives us the message in a way that accepts being accepted and accepts being rejected. We are here to do to take this choice. And since it is about whether God exists, my point is, and my rebuttal to what you said is, and yes, there is time. evidence. It's everywhere around us. It's just a matter of choice. I'm done. All righty. Matt, whenever you are ready, let me know, and I'll put your five minutes on the timer. I am ready as I'm going to get. Oh, you're a short time? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So, oh, let me reset that. Yes, you are good now. <laughs> okay. Um, so it seems to me that Ahmed's primary case is that, from a, an example of a beaver, that there's a creature who has knowledge who we don't necessarily know uh, how that creature could have certain knowledge or information. And there's a couple of really big problems here. 
um, and a few minor problems here. And it's not surprising that um, engineers tend to find this the most perplexing because they had to work so hard and study so long to understand things at a level that a beaver doesn't, that a beaver might just intuit. I love this because I've used a beaver as beaver dams as an example for um, how to identify design uh, in the past. So maybe we'll get to that. Um, the scientific method doesn't start with a theory. It starts with a hypothesis, a proposed explanation. And that hypothesis must be testable and falsifiable. Uh, unless somebody here knows something I don't, no supernatural proposition has ever been demonstrated to be testable and or falsifiable as part of that. It is not scientific to appeal to magic or the supernatural when you merely run out of ideas. We know that, yes, knowledge is the product of a mind, um, but where the, the, that knowledge come from is the question that he's asked. And first of all, we have to ask, was it knowledge? What does the beaver actually understand about what it's doing? How much is instinct? How much is genetic memory? Uh, how much is cognitive processing and understanding? Just because it builds a structure does not mean that it understands the physics and the mechanics of a structure. Um, it knows what works and what doesn't, perhaps through trial and error and other things. It's humans who know so much more, and the humans are the ones reading into this. It's not surprising that an engineer or someone who studied engineering is more impressed um, with this. I'm, I'm plenty impressed with it. I love the, it, nature, and it's a huge question how some of these creatures can know things. But that question is not answered by, it must be magic. It must be some being outside of space and time who's conveying the information to them or directly to their brain. So the problem here, and one of the big problems here is that we're presuming that the beaver knows things. We do this a lot when, when we go back in hindsight to see, oh, here's a supposed prophecy and here's where it came fulfilled. How could this person know this? Or as has been the case when I've debated other Muslims in the last month or so, it's, oh, here's a fact about the universe that somebody living in the desert couldn't have possibly known. How could they know it? It must've been revealed by God. This is not just a little anachronistic in the sense of us uh, asserting what they can and can't know with respect to time or with respect to their uh, perceived advancement as a species, whether it's beavers or humans. Um, but we presume that the beaver knows something without demonstrating that it knows it. In the same way that does a bird that constructs a nest need to know about the physics of the branches? How much of it is trial and error? How much of it is instinct? And we don't know. Now, I might just write that information is significant, but he's wrong when he says that it must require a sender and a receiver. It's communication that requires a sender and a receiver. Information doesn't require that at all. I can gain information. I can gain knowledge on my own as both perhaps sender and receiver, if you wanted to use that example. But he starts up, but he, he, he circumvents around this by saying, if God were to send your message into the brain the same way that he does the beaver, well, there's no demonstration that God of any type sent any message into the brain of the beaver. But if the objection is that if God were to treat us the way he treats the beaver and just give us information, that's not what, the way God wants to interact with us. Well, how do you know that? And why is that a good thing? That is nothing but special pleading that avoids the actual issue here at all. You have to demonstrate that a God exists, that a God is choosing to interact with us in a particular way and has some reason that you can do it, uh, or some, some reason that you can point to, which is the why behind it. Um, in Thamed's case, he's, God communicates to us through our prophets. Cool. If my mom communicates with me through a service, that service can demonstrate without doubt that they are getting information from my mom. As soon as the prophets that you're pointing to demonstrate that they are in fact getting information from God, then you can call them prophets, but not one second before. Just because someone says something in a prophetic sense and you find it valuable or true, that doesn't tell you at all where the source is. So this isn't a scientific method. That, this isn't a scientific method that's being put here because science doesn't get to appeal to the supernatural. When you list off candidate explanations, you don't get to list explanations that aren't accepted as candidate explanations. And what we're doing here is saying, hey, I can't think of how this can be unless there is a God. Therefore, it's a good reason for, there, for us to believe there's a God. And that is an argument from ignorance fallacy. Sorry, argument from incredulity. And that is time. All right. I mean, this is the portion where it's 10 minutes of hot questions. You get just to throw as much at Matt as you want, interrupt, redirect. Uh, this is the part where they say, why isn't the mod stepping in? It's because 
I'm not supposed to in this particular juncture. Then after these two periods, then it'll be the back and forth. So whenever you're ready, you may begin. Excellent. So actually, uh, Matt saved me some of the as asking of the questions. So I will start by asking him some of the questions that he, that he has already uh, confirmed. So Matt, you, you did confirm that knowledge is the product of a mind. I did understand that, right? So I, I, I agreed that knowledge is significant. Um, I, I tend to use the word knowledge as in... Um, some people use justified true belief, but basically it is information. So I don't know that knowledge exists absent a mind. I don't know that it's necessarily the product of a mind. I, I'm not trying to dodge it all, but I, I, if there were no minds, I think there would be no knowledge. Okay. So, uh, for example, if you if you if you find that a bird knows the place that it should migrate to, and it does this even if it has hatched out of an egg and it's now winter. Um, you acknowledge that this is knowledge, likewise, no. knowledge of any other migrating creature, likewise, knowledge necessary to build an ant colony, likewise, knowledge necessary to build a dam. Is this knowledge or not? So a no, beaver I, I is don't... building a dam in a specific manner. Does it need knowledge or doesn't it? Not? No, I, I don't think any of those are, are clear de demonstrations of knowledge. It might be knowledge. I don't know what a bird does or doesn't know, but I think what's happening is that we watch what a bird does and we infer um quite frequently that it has knowledge i don't know that a bird uh has knowledge of where its home is apart from having already been there experientially um i don't think it has knowledge of on its first migration trip although it's doing that with others um the process of actually building things i don't know what knowledge exists within the individual creatures or not until they've actually done it and experienced it or watched it etc so uh, in, in, in my opening statement, I did mention that a scientist already tried separating. He, did, he had two groups of beavers, one that has been raised with its parents, mm -hmm. and the other one, they, it separated it from its parents right after birth. Mm -hmm. So it had no experience of, of dams or actually uh, water. And uh, then he exposed them to running water, and they started building dams right out of birth. No exposure to any kind of training. They get better with building the dam in the second and the third dam, but they build the first dam right just be, just because they are beavers. Do you do you acknowledge that this is knowledge or not? So that no, like I don't to build, think to build, to build the dam. They will go and find these boulders or stones. They will lay down a layer of stones and then a layer of sticks and then weave branches and then use mud to to close it. And if there is a leak, they will fix it. They will, uh, they will recognize that there is a leak and they will fix it. And they will do it the same way just because they're weavers. Do you yeah. or not uh, acknowledge that this is obviously a creature that has information and has knowledge? I, I do not. So first it knows all, what I, it's doing, I mean. <laughs> I don't know how many times you're going to ask me and not let me finish. Yeah. But, um, so first of all, when you say obviously, hmm. um, that's a bit of a, a Weasley word. But no. Um, if I haven't seen the study, but if be beavers are taken away from their parents before they have the opportunity to learn anything, before they have the opportunity to live in a dam that their parents created, and then they start building a dam, um, the key thing that you mentioned there was they get better at it. I think that when we talk about what actually, that what we're not talking about there isn't so much necessarily knowledge and information as it is the habit that is ingrained into us. And we've done studies on genetic knowledge and, and or genetic memory is how they end up phrasing some of it with rats and others. Um, it's a complicated subject that we don't completely understand, but the right response is to say, I don't know how it is that they do this. It would be a mistake to say, because we can't, haven't been able to show how it happens yet, therefore the most reasonable uh, conclusion is that they know and they have information and that they must have got this from a god. I would say on the first hand, um, what they know is, I, I, have, I have no idea that they know anything, they just do. And to, to say, well, they'll plug holes. Yes, uh, I don't think it takes all that much information uh, or knowledge at all to say, hey, I've built my structure. I'm I'm here in my nest, essentially. Oh, there's water coming in. I don't like that. Let me plug it, plug it. Um, but to say that they have knowledge and information of engineering and uh, goals and all that ahead of time, as opposed to just having the instinct that has been bred into them over... Uh, millions of years I, I don't know how you reach that conclusion so um 
you, you look at every creature around you that lives and has a way of life and out of whatever it hatches out of or it's born from, it has specific way of leading this life that involves knowing about its environment right after coming to the world and doing things in a specific way. And you wouldn't like to call it knowledge. Why is that so? Well, like you see, you see, for example, a bird building a nest and the bird will build the nest in a specific way that is very suitable for the nest and for its environment. And it does this right by hatching out of the egg. You don't need to, to send it to a nest building class and the beaver and all other creatures. Why are you not willing to acknowledge that this is information and knowledge? Why not? Because there's no demonstration of what the bird actually knows. Um, and there's not a good, a sufficient understanding of what innate instinctive behaviors there are. You're picking out the ones that you find oppressive. Um, there are plenty of other nests. For example, I have um, a pet rat. And it's when it's time to have babies, you can tell from their behavior, they're going to start moving around, they create, you know, kind of a, a nesting sort of structure and behavior. There's no reason to think that the rat knows what's going on the first time other than, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And because of the way evolution works, those Rat, those birds, we'll stick with your example of birds and nests, those birds that were not good intuitively, instinctively from the outset of building a nest with which to safely house their offspring did not reproduce. And therefore those uh, traits didn't get passed on. But the birds that were instinctively, intuitively able to build a nest that protected their offspring, that was passed on to their offspring because those are the offspring that survive. Evolution is the process by which nature selects which species are going to pass their traits along to their offspring. And over millions and millions of years, it's not surprising so, that a bird that can't build a nest uh, isn't going to pass on that trait to its offspring, but a bird that can build a nest will. So uh, do you recognize that selecting features is different from the very existence of the feature? So a bird that will not build a, ne build a nest might die, and the other one that builds a nest does survive, but this is not the question. The question is, the one that builds a nest, how does it know that it needs to build a nest in the first place? There is no evidence that the structure of a nest is in any part of the physical structure of a bird. There is no evidence for that. So scientifically, you cannot claim that this is genetic. It is not. And no, I, 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 yeah. no, 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 I'm not, I'm not claiming that scientifically we've determined it's genetic. I'm saying that you have no way to demonstrate that it's magic, which is Good. what you're so, advocating for. So now I'm not advocating for magic. What I'm advocating you, you for are. is hey, magic. Magic yeah. is 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 appealing to the supernatural. You think there's a god who can violate nature and who can communicate information directly into the head of a bird? Where has that ever been demonstrated? Okay, so the demonstration is in the very existence of the information in the no, head of a bird that you not. and I did you, not. You tell are it. inferring <laughs> that it's knowledge and inferring that it's information passed on. You are ignoring. Yeah what science does have to say about how traits are passed on. Building nests is not a trait. Sure it is. passed on. It is not. It is not. It, it's it absolutely a, what birds do. Yeah, it is. By default. But, it, but it, there is no evidence that it is a genetic trait that is passed on. It's not there. It's not in there. It's physical structure. No, no, no. It's not. You don't have to demonstrate that there's a, like there's a gene for building a bird, uh, for building a nest. That's not what we mean by genetic traits. What we do. The fact that we are all creatures who would prefer not to die, so some of us uh, gather around to, to make warmth or we seek shelter in here, the snake that seeks shelter in the crevice is doing instinctively the same thing that the bird that is doing that it seeks shelter in there and recognizing, hey, this ground is, if I put my eggs on this ground, um, you know, I, who knows what the bird knows and understands? You're making an assertion that the bird knows and understands and that the explanation for that is that God told them or God in, implanted that knowledge. And what I'm saying is, I don't know, and I'm not sure that anybody else knows what the bird does or doesn't understand, but we are able to look at what the birds do and that what the birds do seems to be intuitive, which is why you're saying that they're born with knowledge, which is, you have to actually demonstrate that. All I can do is look at what they do. And the ones that do this are going to pass on that trait. The trait, by the way, is a brain that is wired to do certain actions, just like bees are wired to do dances and ants are wired to uh, construct ant mounds. Um, the, the notion that there's something beyond 
a brain wired to do this is up to you to prove. We at least, do we at least agree that there's a brain and that these are things that the animals do? I think we do. And so you're the ones going beyond that. And that's yeah. time. So, so, uh, um, that is, that is, let, 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 let him get, let him get the follow up question there. That's fine. No, okay. actually, I can, so, I can consider this is one of his questions and I will answer it. Yeah. So, do we need to demonstrate that uh, that those uh, animals understand? No, we don't. What I care is not whether they understand what they're doing or not. What I care is that they are actually doing it and that the very thing that they are doing requires a specific set of skills that can only be acquired by education. You can only know how to build a nest if you are taught how to build a nest. Prove that. Okay. Now, prove it. Prove it. Prove okay, it because so, this is this is the this is the cornerstone we, of what you're hang on this is yeah. the cornerstone of what you're saying you are asserting that it is impossible mm -hmm. for natural circumstances mm -hmm. to result in a brain that builds a nest without having it that information implanted in it by a supernatural being how could you possibly prove no that? no 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 i did not reach i did not reach to that conclusion yet i am taking you through the steps so, so the first the, the first premise of the of, of that thing is that those things that are uh, exhibited by those animals and birds and insects and and you know what have you uh, as simple as they can be as simple as an ant or as sophisticated as uh, or not very sophisticated as a rodent like the beaver are things building a dam building a nest building a colony that has ventilation building this and that hunting in a herd uh, uh, in, a, in a coordinated manner like lions do or whatever other uh, creatures that put plans for hunting or just go and just run after a, a prey, etc. And that this specific species does that and it, it's not taught. Uh, it just does this just by being a tiger, just by being a beaver, etc. These are skills that we as humans need to be educated. You need to be educated about how to build a tower to build a tower. But yeah, termites yeah, yeah. build termite towers just because they're termites. This is that. this is this is the problem in that you your argument is essentially because a human would need to learn this to be able to do this skill. Therefore, mm -hmm. some other animal would need to learn this from an external source in order to be able to do this. How did you demonstrate that it is not merely a product of that species' brain instinctively to do certain things? Okay, so as you have as you have said, or actually. Um, pointed to, those questions are intriguing to you, looking at nature, the big question of natural resistance. And also scientists uh, who, who study zoology and biologists have a very big question mark about instincts. And none of them has, uh, it is not accepted. I have gone through the papers and, and some of the literature about that. It is not accepted to say it is genetically transmitted because there is no evidence for it. It's not accepted to say that a brain just pops up wired to build nests or dams because there's I'm, no I'm evidence. I'm sorry, but I'm going to interrupt here because you're not answering the question I asked. How did you determine that it is not possible that mm -hmm. it is genetically, instinctively passed on? I'm not saying, I know the scientists don't want to say, hey, we've confirmed genetic memory because we haven't. How did you rule that out as a possibility? Because you are ruling out something that is still considered a candidate explanation and instead of that, you are opting for one that could never be currently. Well, until somebody demonstrates how you can dem uh, falsify supernatural claims, it's not a candidate explanation. How did you determine that it's not possible to have a naturalistic explanation for this? Knowledge about the external world has nothing to do with the internal structure of anything. That's okay. not an answer to my question. That is exactly my question. An answer. My so, question, yeah. no, sir. My question is. How did you demonstrate that it is not possible for there to be a naturalistic explanation for how birds build nests? Yeah, so I've, I've, I've just, I was exactly actually answering to that. If you open a laptop or a computer, uh, our very uh, most co closest thing to a brain, not, not very similar, and you find on that computer information outside of the computer, this information has to be put there. If yeah. inside this is the not brain what's happening. Sparrow, this is what you yeah. assert is happening. This is not what yeah. happens with birds. In mm -hmm. order for your conclusion to be to be reasonable, you must demonstrate that there is no candidate natural explanation for how a bird can build a nest, other yeah. than the information was put there by some other mind. 
you, you've reached that conclusion, but you have to start by saying, here's how we know this can't happen without them. This is, this is, this is a basic premise about information. It's not information. It no, no, sir. Information no. about whether, whether, for example, no, sir, you don't get to presume, yeah. you don't get to presume that it's information because now you're ignoring your basic. Okay. If you want to say that it's information and not instinct, how did you prove that it's not instinct? Yeah, Matt, instinct is just an empty word, a word for a phenomenon that we see and we cannot explain. We just call it instinct. It doesn't make it an explanation, you know. I, I didn't, just, say, just, I didn't yeah. say it was an explanation. Good. Your position so, is that, no, your position is that instinct is insufficient to this task. And I'm asking, how did you demonstrate that? Yeah, so instinct is not an explanation for anything. Instinct is the, is the tag. Absolutely. Instinct is the tag, is the name that we give to these behaviors that we don't have an explanation for. Correct. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Pause right there. Instinct Good. is the, I'm, I'm fine with that. Instinct is the label that we give to explanations for which we don't have an explanation. You are now asserting that there is an explanation and it's not instinct. How did you, now, inst, are, you, are you denying that genetic information in a species can result in behaviors yeah, I'm not denying that genetic information in species can result okay. in behaviors, but those behaviors are related to the to the physics of the creature. So a genetic uh, um, manifestation of a hormone, for example, that causes you to be angry or your heart but, beats, but a hormone affects is not, you, no, a hormone but is it not doesn't a cause you to know something. I'm sorry, but the time is mine. A hormone is not a behavior. I'm talking about what creatures do. Are you saying that... Instinct, despite being a, a label, however you want to do it, that there is not a natural, how did you rule out a natural explanation for what animals do? Yeah. So, so actually, I've, I've answered that before. So the reason No, actually, is, you haven't, but I'll let people rewind the, and see that you the have. Reason, the reason is that this kind of behavior is related to information that is external to the physical structure. That is an assertion that you've made that you haven't demonstrated. You yeah, are basically so, you are basically asserting that the bird cannot do this without access to information that it can't get naturally. And I'm saying, how did you determine that it isn't and that there isn't a natural explanation? A question you've now dodged four times by claiming you answered. I, I haven't. You just cut me off before completing the sentence. So so the behavior that relates to, for example, what I will I will I will go through the examples that I have given you and show you. For example, when a bird is when a bird is migrating to a place that it has never seen, when it exhibits behavior that shows that it understands the map on a global scale, this has nothing to do with its genetics. If a bird that lives in North uh, Europe uh, migrates to uh, uh, North Africa, you, you have specific not, place, neither you nor anyone else has demonstrated uh -huh. that a bird understands geography it, on a global scale. You it haven't demonstrated. It does their, not their, make it their, their, their movement from one spot to another as weather patterns and other things changes, it would be a mistake to, to presume that they understand geology. You are injecting a required information that is not evident in the behavior. So, so now, Matt, if you, if you are going around uh, uh, the city of New York and I tell you I want to go to the Empire State and you just go to a random place and end up in the Empire State, Okay, it's not logical. You have to know where the Empire State is. Except so that if a, a bird will travel a from bird Spain doesn't to go Morocco, to the Empire State. Your analogy is horribly <laughs> I, flawed. I am giving I an analogy. In, with I live, a human. I live yeah. in a town with over a million bats that live underneath the bridge, and they migrate in the, at, at around the same time in the season to the south. The mm -hmm. notion that they are that they are doing what you're doing when you say I want to go to the Empire State is something that you need to demonstrate and not just assert. You don't get to take behaviors of non-human animals, anthropomorphize them to our requirements, and then claim there must be information from an external source. That's not that's not scientific. It's not reasonable. It's nothing. You're basically yeah. just denying that well, animals can do things the, without the guidance of a god. The, the information can either reasonably be found into inside the physical structure of the animal, or otherwise, it is information about something outside the physical structure of the animal, and then you will need to tell me how did it get in him. 
So uh, if a animals, beaver understands, no, 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 no. I can, yeah? I, we can already deal with this. Can an animal yeah. sense oh. what temp? Can an animal sense what temperature it is? Does an animal have access to information from the external world? Yeah. So we know they're, they're, how we do know how we do know how an animal senses the temperature because yes. it has it has sensors on its skin that can sense the temperature. Yes. But we don't we don't have a, a sense with the animal to understand how to build a dam. If it knows how it builds a dam, we need an explanation for yes, this knowledge. But, but the this fact the that point. you don't know how the animal does it does <laughs> yeah. not mean that you get to assert that it comes from a god. You it's have to first me. rule out, you have to first rule out naturalistic That's explanations, time. and you have to demonstrate that God is a candidate explanation, and you've done neither. Sorry, what All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the 35-minute timer for the open discussion. I'll jump in five minutes before that's about to end to let people know to start putting their questions in the chat. Uh, once again, thank you for both debaters. Please consider hitting the like button. That helps the YouTube algorithms. And you guys may begin. Yeah, so I will, I will, I will just wrap up uh, the answer to, the, to, to, to Matt, if you will give me just one minute, Matt. Go. Very simple. It's very simple. Um, if I open my computer and find an article about beavers, and it doesn't make sense that this article is a product of the random uh, structure uh, of bits in memory, and it's not a product of how the laptop is typically wired, then somebody must have written the article about the beaver. Um, if the way to put information into the computer through a keyboard uh, does not follow uh, uh, um, uh, except that somebody keys the information in, and if there is no way for the computer to acquire this information by itself, like sensing temperature, then somebody is communicating with my computer. And if I ignore this fact, I'm ignoring a direct observation. What I'm saying is, it is a direct observation that every creature that lives on the, lives on the face of this earth has knowledge about its presumed way of life that, it, that will help it. This is completely separate from its physical adaptation to its environment, where we can have debates about uh, 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 how good or how bad natural selection can get. It's a completely separate issue. Uh, those who have the knowledge and survive and those who do not have the knowledge and do not survive is also a different issue. The issue here is there is knowledge. Knowledge needs somebody to teach. If this somebody is not uh, somebody who is in front of you training an animal to do something like we do in the circus, for example, we have to have a genuine question about how this information and knowledge gets in there now, when we look at, um, when, we, when we measure to our experience, or not to our experience, just by the nature of information, and that information is about uncertainty, is about surprise. And we find that something repeatedly happens and happens and happens, just because this creature is what it is, then we have to conclude that there is an entity that we can see its results, that is communicating with these creatures and giving them this information. Now, you want to call this, this entity God or not, something else this entity has to exist you want to call it supernatural or not this is something else this is just terminology now and lexicon but i can consider that god and nature god, nature is a product of god so we, you want to call it supernatural this is a choice of language Nate, there is no separation between uh, nature and god you want to include god in nature you don't want to include god in nature you want to use the word supernatural you don't want to use this, this completely language like linguistics there is a phenomena that needs explanation this explanation at this is that there is continuous communication of information into this world that is guiding living creatures. And I call this communication from who I call God. You want to call it something else? Okay, tell me and tell me what this entity is. But other than this, I, I think I think the case for uh, knowledge continuously flowing into this universe from some, somebody who obviously cares, I think should be an evident case, I think. I'm confused about the format for this portion, James, because it's not the Q&A. So what's supposed to be happening? You're supposed this to, is the uh, open discussion director. portion. Yeah. yeah. So this is just you guys get to go back and forth. Sure. Uh, my apologies. No, that's fine. I, it's, so a laptop isn't an animal. It's There's nothing that it does naturally. It had to be programmed to do absolutely everything to do. When you use it as an analogy, um, you are already making a terrible mistake. But none of the things that you talked about is analogous to what happens in an animal. It's not like we open up an animal and find instructions for building a nest. Um, you're cherry picking 
by saying that suckling is okay to be a naturally non-implanted information thing that animals do. But nest building or migrating, that's just too much. That has to be implanted externally. Where is the justification for where you draw a line between what it's acceptable for an animal to do without guidance from a god and what it's not acceptable for an animal to do without guidance from God. And before you answer, you made another mistake because you talked about training animals like you do in the circus. In, in things like the circus, my partner actually does uh, target training with some of our animals. Um, you are training them to do something that they don't normally naturally do. That is where the external training comes in. That is where they learn something. There's a distinction between what animals normally do, what they naturally do, what they seem to be able to do without instruction and what they do with instruction. What you're doing is taking and drawing a line and saying, of all the things that animals apparently do naturally, some of these, I'm gonna say, okay, they can do that naturally, but these other ones, that requires a God. What is the justification for where you draw the line? Actually, I like very much the example that you've given, which is a follow up on what I have said. So you see an animal that does not know how to jump uh, a specific jump or to ride a bicycle or whatever you can train it on. And then you know that somebody has trained it to. Now, whatever we are used to see an animal uh, does is not a justification that this animal can actually do. So if an animal is doing something as amazing as building a dam, not just because it's doing does not cause us to raise our eyebrows. It does cause us to raise our eyebrows when we see the sophistication of a nest or a dam or a ventilation system of an ant or a migration of a salmon fish or of a bird or a turtle that goes back to the same beach that it has been born on or hatched on uh, years when it was uh, so little and was washed by the, the ocean. All of those phenomena in the natural world, living things, are completely uh, abnormal and need justification. And what you have said is exactly what I have been pointing out. When you see an animal doing something, uh, uh, for example, that's learned in a circus, you immediately realize that it has been taught because it's not normal that you see this animal doing that. Now, yes, the question because, that I'm posing see, is... But, but that, building yeah. a dam is... See, there's a reason that I use the beaver dam as an example for design because some people are confused and they think that we can determine design by complexity. But we don't. We determine design by contrasting what occurs naturally <clears throat> with what does not occur naturally. And beavers building dams occur naturally by your own admission with the example that you presented where a beaver has been taken away from its parents and no human being trained to do it. It naturally builds a dam. You are looking at that and saying that is like someone trained it to build a dam in the same way that someone could maybe train it to ride a bicycle. And that is your burden of proof to demonstrate that instead of occurring naturally, it occurred because somebody, a god in this case is what your, your conclusion is, trained it to build the dam. How do you demonstrate the difference between what it can do naturally and what it needs a god or whatever you want to call it to, to train it to do? Actually, I'm very content to say that it does it naturally. Now, the question is how is it doing it naturally, not whether it is doing it naturally or not. So it does actually do it naturally. And this is the question. If nature has information beyond what is in a system, in a natural system, then you have to ask the question, how? How is this natural system? I don't know. Do you? Okay. Do yes. you? Yes. Okay. As I told me, then I demonstrate <laughs> how you know. What, what, is, as, what, is, what is it that you know and demonstrate <laughs> how you know it? Because as, you will be the first yeah. in the history of the world to demonstrate that a god has done anything. Can I, can I answer the question? Yes. <laughs> now, ask any person who is conversant in information theory, and he will tell you that if information is at one end... Ask anybody who's to... conversant in information theory, and they will tell you that you need to demonstrate that something that you're referring to as information is information yeah. in that sense and not just asserting it. That's not the question that I asked. Go ahead. I'm not asserting anything. I am saying that we find this uh, creature appearing out of an egg or uh, or, or being born, Okay, and it has information that is not justified by its physical system. And then you have to ask them immediately. It has if a you brain. Are a communication engineer or an information it scientist. It has a you brain. Have... How did you determine that this information is yeah, in its brain? Yeah, B brains do not come with information. How do you know that? Don't. How do you know that? <laughs> we know the physical structure. It happens. No, no, no. How do it you know that, that what you know? See, information yeah. doesn't exist. Information isn't a thing 
that exists, just like mind isn't a thing that exists. Minds are what brains do. The thing that you're identifying as information is animal behavior, and you are then injecting intent and knowledge and purpose onto it. How do you know that what this animal is doing is not a natural product of its brain? Okay, so information... I don't know what I don't you mean care by about information. I, 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 don't I don't even accept that it is information in the way you're doing it. I, okay. I, I keep, I've asked the same question two or three different ways. And yeah. that is so, your position is that the, the beaver is doing something that you've both said is natural and that is must have learned from another mind. Demonstrate that it must have learned it from another mind. Yeah. So I, I was just going to answer that. So information, I don't know what you mean by a thing. But if you have a piece of memory, whether brain memory or computer memory, the physical structure of this computer memory and the other computer memory that has information in it that is different from the first one is, is the same. It is the arrangement that is different. Okay, so this one has one zero 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 and the other one has one 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 zero. Okay, so this is like ons and offs. And this is what we know is in the neurons of our brains. Okay, so the, the very physical structure of any brain does not have pre-arranged information in it. If you get a chip or you get a memory chip or you get a brain that has pre-loaded arrangements in its neurons, uh, this will have to be noise. It will have to be meaningless information. It has to even out to blank. It, it is called white noise. So when you start by white noise, we call this no information because it is completely uh, 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 random. But when you get an arrangement, then you need to ask, where did this arrangement come from? Now, if this arrangement is related to the very physical structure of the system, like an arrangement of a crystal, for example, that is related to entropic, entropic uh, ordering in, in one way or the other, uh, the system going to a low level of energy, then we know there is a physical uh, thing. But if a system arranges itself to the extent that a piece of paper has letters written on it that read a story, then you know that somebody must have written it. This is the way information works. This is all what information theory is about. When something is written in an abnormal way it and it has meaning that relates to its context, then it is information written or conveyed by an intelligent entity that knows what it's doing because it has relevance to its context. Yeah, when literally nothing that dam, you said is relevant yeah. to any of this at all because you are just flat out, out denying that creatures mm -hmm. can do things as a product of the way their brain is wired during its initial development. Yeah, they 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 can do they can do these things that are related to their own physical structure. Yes, but they will not they will not know like digging and breeding and suckling and nesting. Those things yeah. are, rel are are related to their structure. Yeah, so 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 digging is a motion of its own body, okay? But if a dog, okay, just out, uh, you you you, sit it, you you let it out of your house for the first time in its life, okay, and it goes to a place and searches in a specific place and gets out a, a paper from the ground on which is written the dog's name, then you must know that there is a trick. Why is it that okay. you guys keep coming up with examples that no, but that have never happened, have nothing to do with reality? <laughs> Absolutely. Has, has anything remotely like that ever fucking happened in the history of the world that a dog has gone of and course. dug something up and found a piece of paper of with its not. name on it? Of course not. Of course not. So why would you use that as an example? I thought we were supposed to be talking about yeah, reality. Yeah, be, be, because, because the things that we are used to, like a beaver building a dam... Are you suggesting like a, that a beaver yeah. building a dam is like a dog going and digging up a piece of paper with its name on it? So I I think I think that you will not find a, a, a dog finding the piece of paper with its name on it surprising if you know that Matt taught it this. If you know that that Matt gave Are it this Are you suggesting moment. that a yeah. beaver building a dam is like mm -hmm. a dog going and digging up a piece of paper with its name on it? I am suggesting that the cause that I am proposing for both, one of them you will immediately acknowledge, the dog, somebody must have told the dog, somebody must have trained the dog to do this trick, okay? Because it it's wouldn't like, know it out of its like own. It's like you're incapable of answering the question I've asked. I am. Are you suggesting I what that, I'm a telling beaver, you, that a beaver yeah. building a dam is akin to a dog going and digging up a piece of paper with its name on it? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, one of them, the first one, I'm, I am pushing onto the discussion to cause you uh, a level of surprise reaction. Are you suggesting yes. that a beaver building a dam 
is yeah. like a dog going and digging up a piece of paper with its name on it. I am suggesting that both need information to be conveyed to that creature. Are you okay. suggesting? Okay, so you are saying that they're the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. cause for both phenomena has to be it's, that somebody it's told this creature that you are contrasting something which occurs naturally with something that you admit has never occurred and would never occur unless somebody actually One, trained it. Once again, in order to, once in order again, to identify design, you contrast it with that which occurs naturally. If you're going to say that a beaver is building a dam is clearly the result of design where in an, where information has been implanted to it by an external source, you must demonstrate that it is not possible for this to occur naturally. That's how you do it. Yeah, we know that it's not possible for it to occur. We know that it's not possible we know that for beavers, information. It is impossible for beavers to build a dam naturally? No, we know that it's impossible for a beaver to acquire this information from its own physical You, you haven't because... demonstrated that the beaver has information. We're talking about what the beaver does. This is, is this it is, impossible this is for a there property to be a natural explanation yeah. for how a beaver builds a dam? This is a property of information. Information does not spawn itself into it, beavers. It's it's hilarious how you don't how you continue to refuse to answer the question. Is it impossible for a dog to go dig up a piece of paper with its name on it without being trained to do so? Yes, it is impossible. Is it impossible for a beaver to build a dam without it being trained to do so? It is impossible too. And there this is the reason. I, I, and I this nothing, is the reason. I have nothing more to add. And Thank this you. is the I reason. Got the answer. And this is the reason that I'm asking you who is training, who is conveying this information right into not only the beaver, right into every living creature about its proposed way of life. Yes, I'm sorry, but Where your the way of life to is to demonstrate that it's impossible creature. doesn't yeah. mean that somebody else has to demonstrate that it is. If somebody your demonstrates position, your position is that a beaver yeah. couldn't do this unless somebody taught it how to do it. That is what yeah. you need to yeah. prove. And you don't get to prove that by just asserting that it's the case. I don't I don't need to prove exactly like you have accepted that a dog cannot do this. I didn't unless accept being that. Taught. Okay, I so didn't accept ask, that. I'm so, asking you for your with your example. Now, my turn to ask you now. Okay. Do you accept that a dog will not do this trick un unless it is taught or not? That a dog would not go and dig up a piece of paper with its name on it? Yeah. Where did the piece of paper with its name come from? Somebody put it there, obviously. Okay. Then it is possible for a dog to go and dig up yeah. a piece of paper with its name on it. Yeah. If somebody told him that you need no, to you go and to dig him. that piece of paper. If yeah. that piece of paper happened to smell like its owner and the dog tracked it down and dug it up <laughs> thinking that was his owner, that's one possibility. If okay. if the piece of paper happened to be where the dog like, naturally, hang on, I, if the piece of I paper... Like if the yeah. piece of paper happened to be where the dog normally dug, if it happened to be where it had buried something else, if it happened to be next to something else, all of those things, which are coincidental. But the thing is, I don't know, and neither do you, and neither does anybody else, what the explanation is. However, I like your, is I like it your reasonable answer. to infer that the dog was perhaps trained to do that? Yes, because throughout the entirety of the world, no dog has ever demonstrated an intuitive ability to go and dig up pieces of paper with its name on it, but that is something that could be trained. However, throughout the entirety of the world, every beaver has demonstrated the ability to dig, to create a dam, or at least have a, generally, um, I'm sure there are beavers that can't because they're deformed or whatever. So we recognize design by contrasting what occurs naturally with what doesn't. We have no evidence that dogs do this naturally, we have mountains of evidence that beavers do this naturally. If you are going to say that there isn't a naturalistic explanation, you are the one with the burden of proof to show that there isn't a naturalistic explanation and that a non-naturalistic explanation is actually preferred. That's it. Okay. That's how all of science works. So I like your I like your answer very much, and I'm going to use it against you. Okay. So you say maybe the dog got the paper out because it has a smell on it. So you are referring to a sensory thing in the system of the dog. Yes. There is not there is no sensory thing in the system of a beaver that relates to the way he should architect a dam. No, 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 not there. not architect a dam. But okay. there there are sensory things within a beaver that guide it as to am I warm enough? Am I cold enough? Am I dry enough? Do I feel safe enough from the wind? Um it does this is essentially work as a place for a nest to keep me safe from predators all of those things are have to do yeah. with the beaver's interaction with the external world good but the, the, we are not we are not here talking about the motivation of the uh, beaver to do this and the time that it wants to do this we are talking about its ability to do this 
Now, when the beaver has uh, an issue with predators, but it is able to build a lodge and to engineer the lodge in this way and to create a refrigerator for its food in, in a specific way. Now, the question is, how does it know? The other explanation you said for the dog, maybe it did it by coincidence, but how will you know? You don't get to ask, how does it know until you demonstrate that it knows? First, you must say, why does it do? And then you would have to demonstrate it does because it knows. And then you would say, how does it know? And then you demonstrate how it knows. But you haven't even done the first part. All you've said is, here's a behavior. How does it know? You so, skipped You skipped the middle part that that's important. Okay, Matt. So it is, it is obvious that, um, to me at least, that a beaver builds a dam uh, because it knows how to build a dam. No. Uh, you, you, you can watch a two-minute video, and since you used the beaver example before, you must have watched the videos about looking at how I don't beaver have to builds. Watch. I have watched videos, but I've seen them okay. in the backyard doing it. Great, great. Putting the stones, putting the sticks, putting, yes. weaving the branches, yes. using the mud, yes. uh, making it in a specific con convexity or yes. concavity, fixing it, doing the lodge, creating the ventilation. Yep. It does know what it's doing. Yeah. Well, it does know what it, it's doing. It does it. Whether or not what it what it actually knows, what its ability, what's what it's able to process cognitively, whether it is aware, I'm going to build a dam and I need to to do these certain things, or whether or not this is instinctive. This see, you were fine with babies suckle and nobody had to teach them how to do it, but when we got to parents nest, that's when you asserted that somebody needed to, to teach them how to do it. I asked you a while back something you never answered, which is where do you draw the line between what it can do without being instructed and what it has to be instructed for? Where do you draw the line thank, and why? Thank, you never thank answered. You for, thank, thank, you for, thank you for actually repeating the question because I wanted to answer it, but, uh, but maybe you said too many things. I was not uh, all right with babies knowing how to suckle. What I said in my opening statement was this, that humans among... Um, regardless of their, you know, uh, being the pinnacle of uh, uh, the dominant species now over this planet, uh, humans have very, very limited, um, quote unquote, instinctive behaviors than this, maybe limited to very simple things like suckling. But suckling does surprise me that a baby just outside of his mom would, would, would really have an affinity to go uh, to suckle uh, breasts. It is surprising to me, regardless that it's happening over and over with all human babies and many babies of other mammals. So is this something that I do not see surprising? I do see surprising. And actually, uh, but I actually focused only my presentation on, on the beaver because we only had 10 minutes. But actually, if I reshare my screen, I will show you that I had a slide there for human suckling and for even suckling in dogs. And there is actually a verse in the Quran that some uh, translate as a wonder of a giving of uh, Allah or, or of God to humans that he has taught them to suckle while being babies. It's a specific ayah called, called وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنَ And we, gui we guided him to the two ways. And some of the uh, Quran uh, um, uh, 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 commentators said that the two ways here uh, are, is the bounty of showing human babies uh the way of suckling anyway yeah so this, i'm i'm i am i am not i am not i am not i am not not i am not taking it as for granted that babies know about suckling it is not for granted it is something that causes one to raise the eyebrows but it is definitely not as sophisticated as building a dam so so once it, so yeah we're, we're right back to the same point which is hmm. um you seem to recognize or, or, or you seem to, to, your position seems to be that complexity of an action is the determining factor of whether or not it had to be taught by another mind. Um, you, you seem to deny that a, a brain, which is the result of millions of years of development being passed down from parent to offspring, uh, can, by the process of its development, actually instruct behaviors. Like, no. Hang on. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is not my premise. Just, just for you not to, to, to build on this idea. My point is 
not about the complexity of the action. It is about the complexity of the knowledge and information about the external world okay, that is fine. needed. Fine, fine. It's it, the it's knowledge, the complexity not the action. of your assertion yeah. about knowledge, but that's not yeah. what knowledge is, and there's been no demonstration of knowledge. Is knowledge required to breathe? I'm sorry? Is knowledge what, what required to breathe? No. Okay. So that's an act that a body takes... And you're saying that nobody has to teach it to breathe, but somebody might have to teach it to suckle and somebody definitely needs to teach it to nest. Okay. So again, uh, it goes back. This is again, a very um, nice demonstration to my whole point. Breathing is an action in the physical system of the creature. Now, I don't want to go with you into a discussion about whether the human or the animal body is engineered or is evolved. This is not an issue because now we are looking at different things. There is information and knowledge needed to build the body that breathes, okay? But your brain does not need to know about breathing because it is already engineered in your genetics and we know how it works, all right? Now, this is not my question. My question is not whether a specific creature will work as a physical system or a bio biochemical system or not because we can find the explanation for its workings in its own physical system. We might have another debate or another discussion about whether this physical system can be a product of an engineering, if I am an ID proponent, or product of blind evolu uh, evolution, if I am a, a, a naturalist. But this is not our point here. This can also lead to God, but this is not my point. My point is, I will accept the physical system as it is, I will accept that its physical features are a product of its physical composition, including biochemical reactions, including its genetics, including whatever is encoded into its physical system. What is a manifestation of its physical system is accepted as part of the manifestation of its physical system. Now, my, my issue is when a creature out of the box exhibits behavior that needs information about its world outside of its own physical existence, then there is information in that specific meaning of information that needs conveyance and if this conveyance is you cannot prove that it's part of this it is coming from outside this is happening ubiquitously almost for every uh, 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 creature that we see having quote unquote instinctive behaviors it calls for a global mind that is directing these creatures that it has engineered so the only creature that does not do that is the human, but he has the blessing of a mind that can innovate and of books and writing and conveying information in other ways. And this is because it was created to learn and take its own decisions. This is the distinction between us and animals at the end of the day. We choose our way of life. Animals don't choose their way of life. They need to have a communication of how they should live. And then they don't choose. Beavers will just build dams regardless what happens. This is a part of the definition of an instinct, actually. So at the end of the day, now let's, let's go back to your initial position that you are looking for, okay, I don't know, maybe there is God, maybe there is not God. How will you change this position? If you are not looking for uh, evidence that will come and pack on top of each other, that shows you if your definition of a God is uh, 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 this hyper universal mind that has the mental capacity to build this universe and direct it and maintain it, then what you are looking for is actually a mind. How will you know a mind other than by knowledge and consciousness? This is the, a mind is a conscious entity that has knowledge and conveys knowledge and uses knowledge. So if, if I am showing you something that you already see, that you can evidently experience in your daily life with your dog, with the beaver in your backyard, with the sparrow, with the cat, with the dog, and you look the other way, while you see that this creature while it does not have the mental faculty and means to acquire this knowledge on its own and read books and teach its kids and go to universities, it has sophisticated knowledge that it uses and does things with it. And you look the other way, well, Matt, how are you going to change then your position as an agnostic or as a, 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 a weak uh, atheist? How, how are you going to change this position if you are going to look away from the very definition of what a mind is? I rest my case. Me too.
All right. If you guys are uh, done with the back and forth, or we can keep the five minutes that are remain, or it's up to you, or we can go into questions. I'm ready to go into uh, questions. Uh, uh, do we have a closing statement, or that happens after the questions? Well, I'm going to let you guys do your closing statements, but I'm also going to let them start doing the questions. And let, Let's start the questions and have the closing statements at the end, then. I, I'm fine with that, if Matt is fine with that, too. Yeah, whatever. All righty. So some of the uh, questions got lost because they got asked earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but Bubblegum Gun says, at Matt, uh, where in the beaver's brain, brains do the set of instructions that tell the beaver how to build a dam exist in the brain? Matt, provide this or you lose, is what he says. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know, and neither does anybody else, perhaps, because I don't know that we've done MRIs on brains to, in, in beavers to actually determine what state the brain is in when it's doing something. It's also a mistaken assumption on your part to presume that the instruction exists there as an instruction in some sort of identifiable state. Um, to presume that we know enough about the brains and how they work that you could say, here's the location in the brain for this is bizarre, it, whether it's even in a human brain, which we've done massive amounts of experience on, let alone a beaver. The notion that you think I'm lose if I can't tell you where in a beaver is the instruction uh, is bizarre and disqualifies you from any consideration as a rational interlocutor. All righty. This uh, next question is from Farron Sala. It uh, says, does the starfish need knowledge to regenerate a limb or a traumatic injury? Or does it need genes response to for regrowth or had to have knowledge? This is addressed at you, Hamid. All right. So once again, if if uh, uh, what's the name of the person who is asking? Uh, this is Farhan Salah, S-A-L-A. -S okay. So Salah, this is, if, if you've been following the discussion, Regrowing a limb or, or forming any body part, again, is a manifestation of a physical system that has coded instructions in the form of, of genes and developmental networks, and we know how it works. Now, we are not questioning here that a physical system behaves according to its physics or biochemistry or chemistry. The whole premise of my discussion is that this physical system called an animal, like a beaver or an ant or a bee or a turtle or a bird, is doing behavior that needs knowledge of the external world. And since it doesn't go to school or university and it just hatches knowing with this information with it, or just when it reaches a specific age, it starts doing things that has never been exposed to with a great level of accuracy and repetition to completely rule out that it's a coincidence, then the only solution, the only solution is information and information has to be conveyed. And if information is conveyed, it has to be a transmitter. And if this thing is happening globally, this has to be a global transmitter. And since this knowledge is contextual and related to the world, then it is from a cognitive entity. It knows what it's doing and it's transferring information intentionally. On a global scale, if this is not the definition of a God for you, what is? All right. The next question is for Matt. Um, it is from our friend Original Win Productions. It says, Matt, is the relation of mental states to the brain states one of identity or one of function? Is the relation of mental states to brain state one of identity or one of function? I don't know. Um, I'm not even sure I fully understand what you're asking, but I would say that the, generally speaking, my view is that the mind is what the brain does. The mind is the label we put on brains functioning. It's not like the, the mind exists. The brain exists and it produces brain states. Um, and what the brain does, we then label mind. Just like love doesn't exist as um, something independent of the brain state that that is there. So it may be a matter of identity. If, I, if I'm understanding your identity versus function question correctly, it may be a state of identity and function in that this particular brain state, this particular state of firing neurons on and off throughout the entirety of the brain, if we were to take a snapshot of it, that might be love. That might be step one of building a dam. That might be um, 
you know, the act of breeding, that would still make it a function of the brain. So to whatever extent I understand the question, that's the best I can do to give you what my assessment is, but I'm not a neuroscientist and I'm not, you know, I don't think we've done anywhere near enough on the brain um, to say, here's how it necessarily works. My position isn't there is a naturalistic explanation for all of this. It is to challenge uh, Ahmed's claim that there isn't or can't be, and that therefore he, he is justified in, and by the way, even if there wasn't a naturalistic ex explanation, you're never justified in leaping to a supernatural one until you demonstrate that the supernatural is real, can interact with reality, and how you would detect that. You have to be able to tell the difference between candidate explanations. All right. So uh, this question is another question concerning the brain to a degree. It's another super chat from Atheist Discussions. It says, do both debaters know they are not a brain in a vat and why? I mean, oh, this, would you is, like to this is easy. I, I don't know that I'm not a brain in a vat, but I have no reason to believe that I am. Amid, do you have any thoughts to the question? I know that I am not a brain. I know that I am a soul that is using this brain as a transducer to this world. It, now we can I have another debate some other time I, about how you know. I, like, <clears throat> I, I don't know. The, I don't know. I am a soul in a body. Not, but yeah, but you, you, but you know that you're a soul in a body. And I'd love to have a discussion sometime about how you know that you're a soul when I think the soul is the most obviously dead and flawed concept in all of theology. That'd be a cool discussion. Yeah, actually, I, I would like to discuss soul with you. Actually, I, I had this on my channel. I have this series about the soul, trying to find evidence for the soul. And it relates to the outreach of uh, the human consciousness outside to its boundaries. Uh, so, yeah, we can have this. We can have this. And you can, you, you can have measurable experiences uh, from your soul. Uh, that's something we can. If, you, if you're interested in the discussion, I am too. And then trying to get to... That's the pain in the neck, guys, about StreamYard. It only lets you go back so far, so... You gotta go in you can you, you can pick it out you can you can pick it up from YouTube itself I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm not that technically savvy. I'm working on it though. Mm -hmm. So, question from pre naturalist for Amid: How do you how do substitute or how do you substitute religious stories that do not comport with reality? I think he can means. You it, <clears throat> can you put it on the screen or something? I, Let me I try to. Really I can't go back that far. Yeah. What, what, what does it read again? How do you what? Oh, it's hit substantiate. That's a ah. small print. I'm, I'm pulling these off my phone instead of the bigger screen over there. Yeah. So for me, how do you substantiate religious stories that do not comport with reality? Well, you need to tell me first what is the, relations, the, the religious story that does not um, conform to reality to, to be able to respond. But it, it starts like this. You go to, you go to university, this uh, physics professor who happens to be Einstein that you trust to be a great uh, uh, scholar is telling you about something that completely doesn't make sense that's, that is called relativity. Uh, and it, it's completely unintuitive. Uh, why, why do you accept it? Because the scientific uh, world has accepted it. So if you have accepted the bigger concept of a scientific world, for example, you get to accept things that you think do not conform, conform to reality. Things like relativity and quantum mechanics, blah, blah, blah. Okay, which happen to be parts of the field of my study. And I bet you they are completely not intuitive. So you start by accepting that there is a God through your, 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 your senses, through logic, through philosophy, through observations like what I have told you. And then you go to the next step, which is verifying that this specific prophet is a prophet of God through his message or through evidence that he proposes. And if you accept number one and number two, then what this prophet tells you, unless it contradicts with a direct observation that you have, which will invalidate him being a prophet. If he's telling you about a story that happened in the past, then you'd rather accept it if you have accepted one and two. Otherwise, he did not accept one and two. If, 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 if religion is telling you a story that does not conform to reality, then the religion is false. But now tell me, how did you know that it did not, does not conform to reality? And this becomes a matter of what example are you giving? 
All right. So uh, the last question comes from the Atheist Discussion Group, which isn't doing an after party on YouTube, but they're doing an after party on Clubhouse. For those familiar with the app, you can sign up on your phone, join. If you want like the link or info how to get there, uh, just message me guys over Facebook or tag a comment on this video after it ends and I'll work on getting that for you. The last question's a bit off topic, kind of silly, but I, I think that it's just been a hot topic on Clubhouse, which is why they would like both debaters to answer this. Uh, do you know you exist and why? Uh, wow, why, why are we getting uh, Descartes-type questions? Um, of all the things that Rene Descartes got wrong or right, um, the notion of I think, therefore I am is a, is a uh, way of demonstrating that one exists is uh, as reasonable as I could come up with. Now, Thomas Hobbes and others pointed out that Descartes' position is predicated or contingent on the reliability of reason, which we may not be able to demonstrate. And so my answer is, to the extent that we can reasonably know anything, I know I exist. Yeah, my answer is just being able to say I means that I can self-identify. It's enough evidence that I exist. Self-awareness is enough. And if you don't trust your awareness, you trust nothing. Then there is no meaning to anything. So if you don't have an answer to this question, there is no point asking the question in the first place. All righty. Um, once again, thank you for both debaters joining. Please check out uh, Matt's channel. Link is in the description. I'm also going to put a link to the weekly call-in show that he does. I mean, I've got a link to your channel. Um, remember, tag in the uh, comment section after this if you want to know the link to the after party for Clubhouse, uh, where the atheist group is going to be debating and talking about this. Um, once again, um, thank you both. Closing? Are, are we going to close? One minute each, maybe? I, you know, I, I almost forgot to do closing. I do apologize. Let's do closing. I'm sorry, guys. I, yeah. I got uh, I got scatterbrained. All right, I'm going to put the time up. How, how, how much time? Five minutes. Okay. So maybe it's, it's briefer than that. Uh, we are all here to... <clears throat> the first thing that we notice, let's start by the last question, that we do exist. We're self-aware. We have choice. We have mental faculty. Um, we choose our way of life. We choose what we want to believe and what we do not want to believe. We can choose to believe things that are evidently true and call them false. We can choose to believe that things that are evidently false uh, are true and call them true. We are this distinct creature uh, that has this distinct feature, and it is for a reason. It is because we are here to be uh, tested between choosing the easy and submitting to our desires, of which the top one is living unconstrained, or submitting to the fact that we are part of a test. And to succeed in this test, we must acknowledge that we are not the masters of this universe or the masters of ourselves. We have, however, the opportunity to live for eternity as kings if we accept that this universe has a creator who has specific features and attributes of goodness and mercy and compassion and justice and demonstrate the will and live a life in which we demonstrate similar properties and similar features and attributes. In this case, we will have the, the bonus and the bounty of being able to join him and to join his presence ever and ever after this small test finishes. Um, since we have these features, he doesn't force this belief as a fact into us. We are the most intelligent creature on the face of this planet. However, we come to this planet out of the box almost with zero knowledge about anything that relates to even the simplest things about our way of life. Our parents have to teach us. And we need to make our own minds from the vast um, phenomena around us, very straight and direct observations that this universe is fit for a purpose and designed for life 
and designed for us to have free will and take choices. Some of those choices can be very destructive, but the very most important choice is why are we here? What's our purpose? And then fulfilling our destiny of exhibiting our best effort to be good people to ourselves and to others. Um, looking the other side is very easy, but our life is very short. Um, I'm not here to, to, to win over Matt or to lose. I'm here because I care about Matt and about everybody who is listening to this debate. Because this question is a question that forces itself on us. There is evidence for God all over us, all around us. I have just selected one aspect from the natural living world. I can have at least 15 debates like this, each one from a different angle and reach the one similar conclusion that there is God. He is obvious. He cares. He created us. He is communicating with us. And regardless of everything that we see in this world, it is this way because it's like a war game. It is like a game where it's a drill where the best will take the medal and go to the real thing. Um, I would, with, with, with love and compassion to everybody who is listening to this, and first of them is Matt, uh, to really consider the evidence that we have around us in the natural world that cry one thing, this is not here by chance. We are not here by chance. We are here to look and to accept the fact that there is a creator and a grand designer who wants things to be this way and who wants us to have the ability to choose and then to take the right choice because no matter how many years we live, it's short. I don't believe I'm my age. I know in a few years, I will not also believe that I'm my age and eventually I'm going to go away. Likewise, everybody who's listening to this. Let's take the right choices before it's too late. All righty, Matt, I'll start your five minutes when you uh, start, and then we'll wrap up. Cool. Um, the sum total of this is animals do things. Some of those things seem like they require instructions. Therefore, God. Animals breathe, suckle, graze, nest, breed, birth, fight, and more. Some of these are voluntary actions and some of them are involuntary. How do we know that animals know how to do any of those? That was never demonstrated. How do they do them? How do they know how to nest and breed and fight? I don't know. I'm not convinced that they do know how to do these, but they do them. Is it natural? It seems to be. That's the parsimonious conclusion that we've observed this as a natural product of the natural world. And if someone claims that there's something more than the natural world as a potential explanation for this, they have adopted a burden of proof. Ahmed couldn't show where to draw a line or why or if there actually was a line between which things do or don't require instruction. Breathing doesn't, but suckling might. Breeding might. Nesting definitely does. Just like in the line of skulls between our ancient ancestors and humans that we can put up to show the progress of evolution. If you ask creationists to draw a line somewhere and say before this line is clearly ape and after this line is clearly human, what we found when we ask people to do that is that the line gets drawn in different places by different people. And the line not only isn't drawn in the same place, but there's no mechanism to define where to draw the line or that any line necessarily should exist. And every new skull that we find in this line of ancestry creates two new gaps, one on each side of it. So the more we know, the smaller the gaps get in our knowledge, but the more of them there are. And Ahmed's view is a God of the gaps argument, an argument from incredulity. He doesn't believe that X can happen naturally. And our ability to understand it now permits him to inject his God belief, his God assertion, his evidence-free, ill-defined assertion that a God is the best answer. That's not science. It's not testable. It's not falsifiable. It's not rational or reasonable. It violates the principle of parsimony of Occam's razor. There's no testable, falsifiable proposition been presented here tonight to justify that a God exists. He just has the, it's obvious, or it seems obvious to him, it's information, it's knowledge, without ever, ever demonstrating that it is, in fact, information or knowledge, just assertions that, well, if you talk to anybody who knows information theory, they would say this, cool, that's really convenient. Um, maybe people who know information theory don't have a good enough understanding of 
naturalistic instinctive behaviors. Therefore, it must be a mind, and that's evidence that it's God. And when this argument fails, they'll come up with another fallacious God of the gaps argument, which is why the God proposition is not a part of science. It's not a part of human knowledge. It remains a matter of personal conviction or faith that has failed consistently to meet a burden of proof. That, that was the end, sorry. Nope, you're good. Uh, well, this time, for real, guys, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, thank you to both debaters. I'm going to kick the outro, and you all have a lovely evening. Bye. Bye.